Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Scott, character design lead for Valorant. With the launch of our newest agent, Killjoy, I kind of wanted to sit down and go over the hows and whys of character design and what adding a new agent to a game like Valorant looks like and what we're trying to achieve in terms of gameplay. There might be this misconception of some perfect idea as uh, the formula for a winning agent here, but we really think, and through our experience, it's about focus, goals, and a mindset that we like to think of as extreme intentionality. That is really understanding what we're trying to make and what it looks like before we even sit down and try to make it. I'm gonna use a couple of our examples of our more recent releases, namely Killjoy and Reyna, just to clarify some of the points I wanna make, and they're pretty fresh on our minds, so I think it'll help. The first thing we like to do is try to define the target player of whatever it is we're trying to make. That is, who should want to play this and, and why? Reyna was an example of a really clear player type, someone who wants to get high frags, values combat killing and dueling over all else, and kind of is making a commitment to the team that says, I will top frag to have value. What if we had a character for entry fraggers that wasn't a death sentence against coordinated teams or people who are actually playing well? After we kind of discover this aspect of who should be playing it, we really want to start on the paper kit at this point. We have a little bit of a target, and this is where we get into the second stage of how we're going to make this game design come to life. Before this, we usually don't have an individual ability, just kind of that target, that area we want to hit. This starts our ability of turning that target into gameplay. And this is where some of the things that are not just about the player experience come online, including the roster impact. The roster impact is really about when we add this character, not only why is it fun to play for the, for the person we want it for, but what's it actually do? Our characters need to do something when they are added to the game, something that adds new opportunities, new challenges to fight against, new team comp opportunities, right? That is what we kind of call this roster impact, and we think it's really important. It's not enough just to be a piece of cool new content or fun for the target player. We think the player experience does matter, but the health of the competitive ecosystem matters more in our mind. Let's take a look at Killjoy as an example. We wanted to contrast her with other Sentinels, Sage and Cypher namely. Sage is awesome at stuffing rushes and preventing five mans from barreling down the lane and just taking over the site. She buys a lot of time, runs the clock down. She has a really clear and crisp identity in that. Cypher, on the other hand, is really about wide map control, defensive reconnaissance, and basically putting up stuff so you don't have to put people in those areas to defend them. Killjoy, to contrast with that, is about hunkering down, fortifying, and creating risk within a zone. And that risk, if not managed correctly, turning into kills for Killjoy and or her team. This, we think, is a lot different in how you'll use this kind of character, even though it's a sentinel. Setting up a turret or a nano swarm on its own without being around to capitalize on them doesn't really do a whole hell of a lot. Dealing with two threats at once is the way that Killjoy really accomplishes this defend and convert kind of pattern that we wanted to see out of her. One of the other things we ask is what kind of other tactical tools should the agent have alongside their identity? You know, in a game like this, we need a lot of things like vision blocking, a lot of things like breaking utility to kind of round out characters. You need a lot of this stuff on the team, and if only one or two characters has it, they're gonna be must picks every game. Reyna has some of this in her Leer ability. Even though she is about these top frags, she is about popping off and resetting. The Leer ability gives her some breaking utility that for her or her team, she can still have some angle value within the game and make sure that she isn't so reliant on these other non-tactical angle style tools that she might not ever be used at all. Everything I said, though, is still just a thesis. So we have to prototype and test and answer if the kind of player we think likes this agent actually likes this agent. It's OK if players who don't like this agent are people who aren't in the target audience. You know, People who really like Sage for her defensive ability or her support capabilities probably aren't super thrilled about Reyna. They're very different audiences, and that's OK. We think that sometimes even means it's being successful. Killjoy is a classic pitch. She's for people who want to defend and be there and defend herself and her zone with her tools. She doesn't want to just stall attackers. She wants to kill them. She wants to make a plan. She wants to have people walking on eggshells to not make a mistake. And she wants to set that whole thing up. The pitch here is really classic. We see it in a lot of different types of games. The challenge was translating it into the tactical loop for us. Reyna, on the other hand, tries to fill the high frags and entry play style by ensuring every single fight is even, you can't trade her, she'll, she'll get away with a dismiss. You can't wear her down over multiple fights, she'll heal the full each time. 
You need to beat her straight up on her terms. And that's the fantasy that a, that a player who says, I'm going to go out there and top frag really wants to see. And then those provide new challenges also for the enemy players to deal with. Through this stage of prototyping, our characters usually evolve a ton. And what we ship is almost never what we started with. And I think that's important that it isn't. You're never right the first time, really. <laughs> One of the things we really think about when it comes to terms of game balance is a control panel. This is sort of shorthand for the tuning levers that would be available if, and if I'm honest, when, stuff is either overtuned or underperforming. This ensures that if character becomes OP or butt tier in some way, we can adjust without having to change the entire identity of the character to resolve it. Changing a character identity sucks and is something we want to use only as a last resort if all of our tuning levers work. So we want to make sure we spend a lot of time on the beginning of the character's life cycle and go, how would we tune this thing if our assumptions, and again, when our assumptions, are probably wrong about how balanced this is. In the end, it's about a big picture approach. Balance is temporary and metas come and go. Balanceability is permanent. Reyna has a really good example of this because we, we've built a bunch of tuning levers in, both generally, but specifically for her. One of her risks is to be too binary by needing kills to activate two of her abilities. This is where Lear really comes into play for her. Lear is a reliable baseline ability that has a lot of value and is stronger than a lot of abilities that are like it. And that lets her anchor that value into an ability that might be a little stronger on average, but since it's anchoring out the rest of the kit, we consider the whole kit as the balance point, not each individual ability by ability. Remember, we're looking to shake up Valorant with new possibilities in ways that fit the tactical loop of the game. What we introduce is going to be a bit disruptive. The learning curve of a new agent means that it matters. It's meaningful. It's going to add something to the game. And we think that's a lot better that we might have a bit of a learning curve or it might be frustrating to learn how to play against than it is that you go, why did we even add this thing at all? Why does this thing even matter? We want to set our own expectations within our roster and our game, ones that will likely be spicy or feel maybe really inappropriate inside of another tactical shooter. The tactical loop is our foundation, but it is the start of our journey, not the end. Things like dashing reactively, healing after a fight, even you know, classic stuff like blocking vision are things that provide exceptions to the tactical loop, the things that provide value. We use these things in sparse, limited doses or with strong constraints on them to make sure that when you can do them, it's not just about being able to do something cool, it's about allowing new strategies, new opportunities, and new possibilities for the game. We hope to be doing this for a really long time, and we're excited to be doing it together alongside of all you, and we'll be listening and adjusting as we go forward. Today is just the start, not even close to the end, and I hope to see you all the way there. Thanks. <laughs>